Hey there, welcome to the DFS Build NBA Edition. I'm Kevin Roberts, ready to go over the showdown slate for the Celtics-Pacers game for Game 4. Indiana is in a 3-0 hole, and this is probably going to end tonight with a 4-0 sweep, courtesy of Boston. Tyrese Halliburton remains questionable. It doesn't really sound like he's going to play, so he missed the last game. So if that's the end of his presence in this series, we can certainly look to the same guys that benefited from his absence last game. Before we dive too much into it, uh, just going to ask you to like this video if we help you out in any way, and also subscribe to the channel. Helps me out a lot and helps you be alerted to future videos. Also, this video is sponsored by DFS Hero, cool lineup optimizer tool that you can try uh, to help you to help yourself get a takedown. Uh, you can get a 15% discount if you use our link in the video description below. All right, let's dive right into it. First, looking at the top captains of the slate, and honestly, with Tyrese Halliburton likely out, there's quite a few to consider. Jason Tatum had 70 fantasy points in the last game. So I don't really need to give you a big, long sales pitch on Tatum. He is a stud. He's the top projecting player by a lot for the captain or just overall. So I love him for the captain. The only reason why you'd go underweight or even get away from him if you're doing one single entry lineup is to get different right away at the captain slot. Um, last time out, uh, he was reasonably owned because he's Jason Tatum. So it just it's just one of those things. If you're if you want to get different really quick at captain, you can hope for a lower end game from Tatum. But I think I'm going to play him across the board either way. Just be a little bit underweight on captain uh, to get it different. Jalen Brown obviously looks pretty good. Second best projection of the entire slate. Uh, certainly nothing wrong with Jalen Brown on a regular basis. Uh, normally he's going to defer to Jason Tatum and, and that's fine. And obviously last game we saw him come back down to earth a little bit after a big 40 point explosion. And I kind of said that I said, you know, Jalen Brown's still a good play, but he's not going to score 40 real points again. Uh, at least not in back to back games. So, uh, he still shot well, 55% from the floor, but he only had 24 real points and it, you know, Jason Tatum really crushed in that game. So Jalen only had 35 fantasy points. So still very much in play here. Uh, he's a pretty good price for the utility at 9.8 K. I don't have a problem with him at all. Uh, you can pair him with Tatum if you want. I think if you want to gain leverage, though, I would probably uh, a good chunk of the time just go with one of them because the odds of them both going nuclear isn't very good. Um, just uh, the other game when Jalen Brown had uh, his 40-point game, Jason Tatum at 36 fancy points. So these, t- these last two games are a good illustration of that. Uh, imbalance when one of these guys goes off it's pretty unlikely that the, that the other one's going to have enough usage uh to hit the, the sustainability there they'd have to be super super efficient but still they both look really really good up top and they're the best projecting plays uh next up will be pascal siakam he's going to be owned in the utility and obviously i want to get to him quite a bit um he's coming at 9.2k so let's see across the board well, with Halliburton out, he is now the third most expensive play on the board, and he's going to get a lot of ownership just because his usage goes up without Halliburton. Last game, he had 18 shots. Uh, he had 22 real points, 36 fancy points. I really liked him to go in the captain, um, and that was okay. Unfortunately, Jason Tatum doubled his production, basically, so that didn't really work out, but obviously he was still fine playing the utility. I'm going to double down here and say, you know, with the series on the line, with no Halliburton, most likely Siakam looks really, really good in the captain once again. Uh, I would imagine with the Andrew Nemhard blow up game, TJ McConnell being there, and just other guys like Miles Turner for the Pacers, and of course the presence of Tatum and Jalen Brown for the, for Boston. That it's possible that Siakam and the captain goes a little bit overlooked. So certainly, even if you don't like that idea, he is very, very viable uh, in utility. But um, he looks pretty, pretty darn alluring for the captain slot too. Uh, can't ignore Miles Turner in the captain. Good price for utility at eight flat. I think he's fine. Kind of a little bit of no man's land there, just considering all the options there. 35 fantasy points last game. Uh, He's been pretty productive overall in the series. 46 fantasy points in game one. Kind of disappeared in game two. So assuming he doesn't do a disappearing act like he did in that game, uh, once again, in game four, he looks pretty viable. Certainly an option in the captain slot with no Halliburton. His usage is just going to you know, spike up a little bit. And obviously he can go off if he's hitting his threes. No made threes last game. He's still at 35 fantasy points. So he does get a little boost there if he's hitting his shots. Uh, double-double threat, and he can, he can come out there and have a block party at times. So I think right after Siakam, he's very, very interesting. Uh, in the captain slot tonight, just because it's possible their ownership will be a little bit lower than it probably should be. Um, honestly, you can keep going for the captain slot. Andrew Nemhard was the number one captain play because he gave you access to Jason Tatum and he himself had a monster game last time. I don't know if we can come out and demand that, but 51 fancy points in the captain slot for a guy at 6K, obviously that is going to do the trick. 
I'm sure you could have also, you know, survived and possibly even gotten a takedown if you had Tatum in there at captain and then had Nemhard in utility. But the way to go uh, last time was certainly with Nemhard uh, in the captain slot. That is definitely in play again. No problem with putting uh, Nemhard there. The only thing is, I would imagine his captain ownership would spike a bit after that performance, and banking on him scoring thirty plus real points again, and you know, giving that same kind of effort, it just feels like a lot to ask. So certainly in play at utility, certainly viable at captain. I just would probably be a little bit underweight because you know recency bias kind of flips there, and uh, people are going to be more in love with him than maybe they should be. Uh, TJ McConnell is probably. The one I would hope because he came off the bench, he didn't start that game. I would hope that his ownership would, um, you know, be held in check a little bit. He was 25% in the captain when I used him and he still played well. Like he was not a bad play by any means. He had 45 fantasy points. So putting him in the captain wasn't the problem. Uh, my problem was that he was a little bit too owned in the captain. And then I had Ben Shepard who just was a total bust with seven fantasy points. So, um, I, th- I think he's obviously a really good core play. Um, I, I, it's going to be hard to get away from him in general. Utility, I'm probably sliding slide him in there without thinking about it too much, and then I'm certainly going to want some exposure to him in the captain slot as well, if I'm if I'm really not a lot of lineups. I uh, don't want to overlook Derek White. Uh, he's been very good. No problem with the captain there too. Uh, he, he remains a good price at 7.8K. Um, the real decision, I think, with the Boston guards is going to be Derek White versus Drew Holiday once again. They're basically being the same player, but Derek white is $800 more. And drew holiday just historically is not a guy that I trust a lot. Um, I, I keep talking about his efficiency and the fact that he does not have like really high usage in general. And his shot attempts have come down since that big 28 point explosion. He had seven and 10 shots the last two games. He's still getting there with 36 fancy points in both those games. I just don't know if I fully trust him. So with that $800 gap and considering they've kind of been the same guy, um, I think it's possible that Drew comes in a lot more owned than Derek. So I think I would lean, I would lean white there uh, in tournaments. <clears throat> uh, Al Horford popped off again for 40 fantasy points last game. So obviously he remains in play. No Porzingis again. So the minutes are going to be there in a close game. But if the game gets out of hand, he's going to be one of the first bets that they shut down. And just banking on Horford hitting seven threes. Uh, each game or anything close to that is not something um, I'm super excited about. And then if you're good, if you're getting there with Horford at 6.4 K in that range, you might have to end up bypassing Andrew Nemhard or TJ McConnell. And I don't really want to do that. I think at worst, they're going to be sliding into my utility spot. So I think Horford, the argument for him would that he would be a little bit overlooked in tournaments. And certainly if you think he's going to have a monster game, putting him in the captain isn't uh, completely out of play. That probably does it for true captain plays. I feel good about the other guys. Like as we've seen in the playoffs, I mean, Jaden McDaniels, Drew Holiday, Andrew Demhart, all these guys, they are helping you get takedowns out of the captain slot. So you absolutely can put anybody there. Um, but as, as far as a high priority, go, priority goes, I would go Tatum, Jalen, Siakam, and then maybe Nemhart or McConnell. Those are probably my priority captains on this slate. So sliding over to utility to wrap things up here. Let's go over to the Boston side first. I still think in play would be Peyton Pritchard. He's been losing his minutes and he hasn't been playing that well. But if this game goes south, which it could, I mean, this is game four. The game, the series is pretty much over. If the Pacers cannot keep it close like they did last game and it gets out of hand, we could see Peyton Pritchard close this game and play 25 plus minutes and end up crushing. So he's out of priority. He's coming in low at 10%. But... The blow up possibility and his little ownership and cheap price that all combines to make him a little bit interesting in tournaments. Not really that into the other Boston punts. Uh, to keep an eye on Luke Cornett's status, he missed the last game that helped O'Shea Brissett um, get some extra burn. Let's see, he got nine minutes. He had 12 minutes game before. He's not really productive when he's out there, so I'm not super excited to play him. And I don't know how necessary he is, but in a showdown slate, he's he's on the table. He's there, and, and obviously, if Cornett plays at 2.8k. You can look at him, and he'll get about 13 minutes off the bench. Not terrible for value, but not guys I really am excited to play. Over on the indie side, to wrap things up here, I'm I'm very okay with going back to the wall on Ben Shepard. He started and got 26 minutes. So at his cheap price, if he's going to get that much burn, I am willing to take a chance and hope that he doesn't get me seven fantasy points this time. Um, right now, his ownership's at 19%, so that's very, very appealing, appealing to me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, Isaiah Jackson still in play just because he's a good for man guy and he's really cheap. Not a top priority for me by any means, but he's still in play. Aaron Neesmith is still in play just because he's going to get burned for Indy. Let's see what he played last game. He was 5.2K, 34 minutes last game, only 17 fantasy points. And obviously Andrew Nemhard was the guy that we should have had there. And then second was TJ McConnell. I'm still going to rank those two guys, number one and two, but Aaron Neesmith is going to have lower ownership than them. So certainly Aaron Neesmith could get it going. He is cheaper. Um, he projects okay. So he's plenty viable as a leverage play in the utility slot. And what if this is an Aaron Neesmith game instead of an Andrew Nemhard game? We have to think about those narratives. So he's viable in captain. It's just not a captain play that I would feel super strongly about. And lastly, Obi Toppin, 4K flat, decent value, 23 minutes last game. He's going to get about 20 minutes off the bench. Uh, has not been very productive lately, but we know he has a ceiling if he can start hitting his shots. All right, so overall, I think, obviously, we need to get exposure to Tatum. Um, I mean, he's just the best projecting play of the slate and has the highest ceiling just across the board. He's the best play. I would just try to get a little underweight as far as he goes in the captain. And my top play in the captain right now is going to be Pascal Siakam just because I'm assuming, based off of Nemhard's explosion, the presence of McConnell, the ownership and projections of Tatum and Brown, that Pascal Siakam is going to go a little bit overlooking, overlooked in the captain slot. I do still have interest in Nemhard and McConnell in that slot as well. And then I'd be looking for other ways to get different across the board with lower owned options, such as Ben Shepard. I mean, that's really nice value for a guy who's getting minutes and, you know, easily could, could deliver at that price. At the very worst, I want him in utility for sure. All right, that does it for me. Hopefully it's helped you out. If it did, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and good luck.